I'm Richard Banks. Join me on a journey to a junction where time and place and eternity somehow meet. To a small, fierce, rugged land at the meridian of Europe. The Swiss regions of Basel and Lucerne link to one another and to the world like spokes in the wheels of commerce, enterprise, democracy, and freedom. Here is a landscape that could only have been created by Earth's forces at their most energetic. The entire welt of mountains that defines the Alps are byproducts of the colliding of tectonic plates, spewing granites and dolerites into the sky, authoring a wild confusion of raw geology. Here is a landscape that fashioned the soul of a people and spurred them to heights as vertiginous as the Alps themselves. What tectonic shift crunched the landscape of history and created freedom, democracy, and prosperity here? How did this improbably steep land become the crossroads of Europe? Could the answer begin with this modest bridge high in the Alps? In the 1200s, a group of far-seeing villagers hung a wooden bridge across the cracked floor of their land, the Sholenin Gorge near the Goddard Pass. They called it the Devil's Bridge because the feat was so difficult, the devil had to help. In return, he demanded to own the first soul to cross it. The workers drove a goat over, tricking the old fiend, who then in anger unleashed an avalanche of stone. That goat marked the beginning of a new era. Romans had long trudged across this cardinal pass, but the sonic architecture of the Devil's Bridge truly opened the way for travelers, smugglers, and traders from the Mediterranean to the North Sea. And trade meant taxes. Suddenly, this highland matrix of autonomous, sleepy villages saw the flowers of wealth spring in its stony places. What followed was the building of a bridge of faith, spanning to a place they could not see, democracy and nationhood. This is the story of a people both profiting from and defending their strategic location, a story of war and peace and freedom cropping from the collision of the two. It's the narrative of Switzerland in general and central Switzerland in particular. My quest takes me to the Lucerne and Basel regions of Switzerland. Switzerland is the most mountainous country in Europe, an icy ring of teeth that bites off Italy from the rest of the continent. So how did this daunting and deadly barrier become the handshake to the opposite seas of Europe, the great link for goods, ideas, medicines, and people? The story goes that on August 1st, 1291, a sort of three musketeers pledge took place in Rootley Meadow on the shores of this lake. Peasants from the adjoining cantons of Schwitz, Uri, and Unterwalden affirmed the everlasting league, swearing never again to be ruled by a foreign power, crafting the Swiss equivalent of America's Declaration of Independence. In a small museum here in Schwitz, the founding document is displayed. A few words on a scrap of paper, but what words? The cantons pledged to aid and defend each other with their lives against every enemy to attack them singly or collectively. This is the Swiss Charter of Confederation of the year 1291. It is the most important historical document of Switzerland. Now it has, it looks like 
It would have been three seals, but one is missing. Yes, the, the sweet seal is lost. It took guts to toss out the overlords. It took cooperation to keep the neighboring powers at bay. And it took both to create a new nation out of this puzzle of isolated Alpine valleys. In the years following the 1291 handshake, Lucerne, Zurich, and Bern joined the Confederacy, among others. United but fiercely independent, these cantons weathered wars, the bloody division of Protestant and Catholic in the Reformation, the invasion of Napoleon, and world wars. Today, any Swiss will say their first allegiance is to the canton, the second to Switzerland. <laughs>